Hi, my name is Zach, and in this tutorial we'll be taking a detailed look at the Dialogue Tree Editor and its various features. If you don't already know, Dialogue Tree is a free plugin available on the Unreal Marketplace that offers an easy-to-use system for creating and editing in-game dialogue. We will be building somewhat off the topics discussed in the plugin's quick start tutorial, so if you haven't already seen that, I would highly recommend checking it out first. When you first open a new Dialogue Tree asset, you'll be faced with a screen that looks something like this. In the upper left hand corner, we have the toolbar, where you can compile and save your dialogue. Below that, we have the Dialogue Graph, where you can edit the flow of dialogue between nodes. In the upper right, there is the Graph Properties panel, where we can edit the general properties of the dialogue. And in the lower right, we have the Selection Details panel, where we can edit the properties of an individual node. Let's start by taking a closer look at the Graph Properties panel. Currently, this panel is primarily used to edit the dialogue speakers. You can think of this section as the list of speaking roles for a play. The script doesn't really care who fills the role of Hamlet and Ophelia, for example. It just cares that there is some character it thinks of as Hamlet, and some character it thinks of as Ophelia. This is actually one of Dialogue Tree's more important features. The default method of starting a dialogue will attempt to match speaker components to their roles in dialogue according to their dialogue name property. But you can use the start dialogue with names method to manually match speakers into their desired roles. This allows for a great deal of flexibility in determining which actor specifically will fill a given role in dialogue. From the dialogue's perspective, it simply doesn't matter. One thing worth noting here is that the plugin expects you to supply the required speaker components when playing dialogue. Attempting to play a speech whose associated speaker component was not supplied at runtime will cause the dialogue to abort and end the conversation early. More on this in a later tutorial. Two speakers are created by default, player and NPC, but we can set their names to be whatever we like. For the sake of argument, I'll use Hamlet and Ophelia. Here you can also change the color that gets associated with a speaker in the graph. And finally, you can of course add and remove speaking roles. As an example, I will add Claudius and then delete him again. See Hamlet? Not so hard. With the speakers out of the way, let's take a look at the various nodes you can use to create your dialogue. At a minimum, there is always going to be an entry node in the graph. Its purpose is probably self-explanatory, but for the sake of completeness, it serves as the entry point into your dialogue. To create a new node, we right-click in the graph. That brings up a context menu with options for the various nodes we can create. We'll go over each of these in turn, but for now let's start with the workhorse of the dialogue graph, the speech node. You'll notice that each speaking role in our dialogue has two different speech node options we can create, one with an input transition and one with an auto transition. Input transitions play the speech's content and then wait for the player to select an option from among the node's children before proceeding down the selected path. These are ideal for NPC speeches which require some kind of response from the player. Auto transitions, on the other hand, continue immediately to the next node in the chain as soon as their content is finished playing. Speeches with auto transitions are ideal for player speech options or for chained NPC speeches. If we create a node for each transition type, you can see that auto transitions are marked with a double arrow symbol in the upper right hand corner while input transitions are marked by a circle and arrow symbol. You can change the speech's speaker and transition type at any time via the node's details panel. Next, let's take a look at some other speech node properties. You can think of the speech title as the name of a speech node. It helps to distinguish one speech from another and serves as an ID for any other nodes which reference the speech. Speech text is where we set the textual representation of the speech. Speech audio allows you to select an audio clip to play for the speech and can skip toggles whether the player is allowed to skip the speech's audio or if they need to sit through all of its content before proceeding. As a side note, the actual skipping is achieved by calling the skip function on the dialogue controller. Behavior flags merit some special attention. These are tags you can add to a speech as a kind of extra data for the speaker component. You can use this data to trigger specific animations when starting a speech, to play a special effect, etc. This process is facilitated by a delegate on the speaker component, which gets called whenever its behavior flags change. Finally, you may have noticed that I skipped over the ignore content property. This is a niche option which can be used to stop a node's content from playing altogether. If ignore content is set to true, the speech will proceed as if its content had already finished playing. Why would you want that, you might ask? Well, let's say you have a speech node whose only purpose is to allow the player to click a continue button when they finished reading a, an NPC speech. You could give the continue node an auto transition and no audio content, and that would work perfectly unless you decided to also add a speech log. 
in which case continue would get logged to the speech log as a player response, which we don't really want. Setting continues ignore content property to true, however, would prevent the node's content from playing and being logged in the first place. In other words, it can be used to make a speech function as a selectable option and only an option. As I said, it's a somewhat niche feature, but it has its place in certain setups. Next up, let's look at how we can manage connections between nodes. To connect two nodes, we simply have to click and drag from the output pin of one node to the input pin of another, or vice versa. We can also click and drag from any pin into the graph to create and connect a new node in one go. If a speech node with an input transition has multiple children, those children will become the options the player can select from to proceed. Note that any output pin without a valid node to transition to turns red. This marks the pin as an exit pin for the dialog. As the name implies, transitioning out through an exit pin ends the dialog. To break a connection between nodes, right-click on one of the nodes in question. Go to the pin you're interested in, and click on the connection you want to break. Now we'll take a look at the other nodes we can create, starting with branch nodes. We already discussed how dialog can branch based on the options the player selects. But what if you want to branch your dialog based on other conditions? That's where branch nodes come in. Branch nodes allow you to specify any number of custom conditions to branch over. If you add a condition in the Details panel, you'll be prompted to select a dialog query for your new condition. The Node Visited and Speaker Found queries are provided by default. The Node Visited query allows you to check a specified dialog node to see if it's already been visited. The Speaker Found query allows you to verify that a specified speaking role in the dialog has been filled. You can also create your own queries for the dialog speakers by creating a new Blueprint class extending speaker query bool. Speaker Query Float or Speaker Query Int, and then overriding the Get Graph Description and Query Speaker functions. Queries are going to be covered in much greater detail in a later tutorial. Conditions with queries that return a Boolean value will have the Query True property, which asks if you want to negate the query value. Conditions with queries that return a numeric value, on the other hand, will ask you to specify a comparison. In addition, any variables you create as part of your custom queries will appear as properties to fill in for the condition. The if any property allows you to specify if the branch will register as true if any one of its conditions returns true, or if all of them have to do so. On entering a branch node, its conditions are checked. If the conditions evaluate to true, then the branch transitions out through its if pin. Otherwise, it transitions out through its else pin. Event nodes are like branch nodes in that they allow you to have your dialogue interact with the game world as a whole. However, where branch nodes attempt to retrieve information from the game world, event nodes attempt to affect it directly. The Reset Node Visits and Reset All Node Visits events are provided with the plugin. These allow you to mark nodes as unvisited after they've already been played, effectively resetting them to their initial state. You can create your own custom events by creating a new Blueprint class extending dialog event. You'll also want to override Get Graph Description and On Play Event. All dialog events act through a provided speaker component. Like with queries, any variables you create as part of your event will be populated in the Details panel for the event node. It's also worth mentioning that you can add as many events as you want to a given event node. Next up we have Jump Nodes. Imagine you've branched your dialog down a specific pathway, and now you want to revert the flow back to the place before the branch occurred. Now, you could manually draw connections back between the pins, but the more such connections you make, the messier your graph will become. And the messier it gets, the harder it will be to read. Enter the jump node. Simply put, these nodes transfer control to a specified node in the graph. All we need to do is link the jump node where we want it in the graph, and then set the jump target in its details panel. The moment our dialog reaches our jump node, it will immediately transfer control to our specified target node. Finally, we have the compile button in the upper left hand corner of the editor. Before it can be used, a dialog needs to be compiled. This process essentially takes the dialog you created in the graph and scrunches it down into something usable. An uncompiled dialog will refuse to start. If the dialog needs to be compiled, the compile button will turn yellow. If it has been compiled successfully, the compile button will turn green. If the dialog has failed to compile, the button will turn red and any problem nodes will receive a red error banner. The node in question should also display some indication of what the problem is. A failed compile usually arises from one of two situations. A node requires a speaker that has been removed from the dialog, or a required field for a dialog query or event has not been filled out. In this tutorial, we took a detailed tour of the dialog tree editor. 
We covered the layout of the editor, the role of speakers and dialogue, the properties of speech, branch, event, and jump nodes, and how to compile your dialogues. Future tutorials will cover making your own queries and events, as well as how you can further customize the look and feel of dialogue in your project. If this video was helpful to you, please give it a like and subscribe so you get notified when videos showcasing new features come out. If you have any questions or feedback, I would love to hear from you on my Discord channel. And if you're enjoying the plugin, I would be beyond grateful if you could take a few seconds out of your day to leave me a review on the Unreal Marketplace. Finally, if you'd like to support further development on the project, you can do so on Patreon.com. Links to all of that, as well as the plugin's documentation site, will be posted in the description below. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Best of luck and happy developing!